are there going to be fresh taxes on petroleum products? That's something that the minority seem to be pushing really hard. This is the second time I'm hearing this. They should be answering that. I, they have made the allegation. They say there's a bill in Parliament. But you see, the fact is that... Don't go back to Chalk. No, I'm not going to Chalk. Chalk, we have said that there's no shortage of Chalk anywhere. The Minister of Education has indicated that there's enough Chalk in the system. So let's, they let's can continue to the with their propaganda. The petroleum issues. We are a middle-income country. And I've indicated to you on this platform that we need to look internally to generate income to support some of our developmental agenda. We cannot rely on loans which are not even available to us because we are no longer in that bracket. Now, the loans that we used to source now go to Sierra Leone. They go to war-torn countries like uh, 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 new countries like Somalia. They are now those who benefit from that. Is that why so we probably would be thinking about look, new taxes on petroleum we, products? I'm not, I'm not talking about petroleum products, but I'm saying that we should, as a nation, be prepared to take the responsibility to ensure that we provide for our own needs. And if it is that we are going to be taxed, we should sacrifice. I agree that we, as a people, should hold government accountable after we've paid our tax. If we see that the government is using those monies frivolously, let's hold them accountable. That for me. But we cannot say that we will not pay taxes. How do we get the rules? So you don't have a problem with fresh taxes on petroleum products? I don't have a problem, but I have a problem if those taxes are paid and government doesn't use it for the purpose for which it is going to be used. I will call on Ghanaians to hold government accountable and I'll join Ghanaians on the street. Mr. Jacob. Very well. Um, you see, this is, this is just an indication of how insensitive, almost clueless, this government has become. But we, we need to generate a lot more money. I mean, everybody agrees we're not making money. Yeah, but, but if you live in an economy like this, how do you generate the money? When your fundamentals are so wrong, today, go to the port. You will find out that their revenue has dropped by maybe 30 or 40 percent. It is because the people who would import anything to do anything are not doing anything. The fact is because they don't have lights are not working. So how do you generate the revenue? At the end, because you are not generating the revenue, you find the soft underbelly. Consumption tax. Because every all of us, my auntie from Akumasu or my auntie from Jamasi has to come to Accra and has to sit in the car. And the car has to come anyway. They are just piling up taxes. In the last three or four years, this government has collected well over three and a half billion on petroleum taxes. When they introduced this last year, special tax on petroleum, we should be asking, what has, how has happened to it? What do you know? I don't know. It goes into government revenue. To pay what? So, so, pay what, are pay they, so what are they going to introduce again? We live in a country where TOR does not work. TOR is working. Take a phone and also call them. There's a number okay. here. Very well. TOR is working. We're find out. Is, yes. is it to the capacity that, you know, they would or they, they should be? Is that what he said? He no, said it's I'm not working. You. It's not working. TOR is working. Yeah, but, but, but you, but you, you insist see? that they are working. Yeah, well, you so see? I was you asking. See? Yes. Is it to the capacity that TOR should Not be? Not yet. But TOR, TOR is working. But for every liter of petrol working. you buy, you pay something called TOR debt recovery. Number two, for every liter of petrol you buy, you pay something called uh, 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 exploration levy. But Mr. Jaco, if we are asking the questions, members of parliament should be seeking answers for us. No, we ask. We ask every day. I say that. You know, me, I tell people every day that this is a very insensitive government. This see, is a government that does not see, take These are the sense. same people who fought oh. against VAT. And when they came, we, they increased the threshold. These are the people. When you, when you speak, How can I you don't, trust them? Let, you let's speak. allow him to land. And he's when, landing, he's landing when, in the next minute. When minutes. you speak, I don't... Mr. You Jacob, do worse things. Go ahead. He has finished. Madam Moderator, can now, I go? He has finished. Yes, please do. <laughs> because okay. we have to wrap this so up in this is, this some is, few this minutes. Is, this is a government that is absolutely insensitive. No consideration whatsoever for the ordinary man, for the, for the reasonable man, like the will say, the man that walks the streets. So is it that we don't have any choice? I mean, if taxes are coming, they will just come. Oh, but you see, 
we shouldn't forget that all of this is contingent on something we have done. We have entered a program with IMF. There are very strict rules to all of this. Government is not paying any more subsidies on, on, on fuel and on electricity because it is a conditionality. Government must make up a certain amount of revenue. That revenue is not coming. And then the masters in Washington are asking them, so what do you do? You see, very strictly, uh, IMF in the past would set up in the, seven, in the 70s and the 80s. You know, Ghana went through economic recovery program, mm. structural adjustment program, program of action to mitigate the social cost of adjustment. Those things, they were written and directed by them. Today, they will come to you and say, okay, let's sit down and do it. You say, oh, I have a homegrown solution. They say, okay, let us modify it. Let us do this. Let us do this. But they will give you benchmarks. Look, if another tax comes up by before Friday and it is passed, it is because the, 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 the program expects a certain outturn of revenue. That revenue target is not met. The masters in Washington are saying, then do something. You either cut expenditure or raise revenue. Any, uh, any rise in revenue must come from a tax. So the anticipation is that because the revenue is not coming, they might increase, they might slap on, and they call it a recovery margin. Hmm. They will now, just put well, a see, certain recovery yeah. margin so that the revenue will, ma will, will match up. Thank you, Mr. Jacob. 30 seconds yeah, and 30 then seconds. we're done. IMF policies have not been imposed on us. You remember Senchi conference or Senchi whatever it is. They were invited, they refused to go. That was where we built what is called homegrown policies. It's not the IMF that said that we should, we should prune down our, our, our uh, payroll system. It's not the IMF. We went to the IMF with policies and said that help us to bring credibility to these policies. Mm -hmm. So these policies uh, have not been imposed by, by, by the World Bank. You didn't have credibility. Hey, hey, IMF. Okay. I, All IMF. Right. Now, <laughs> program of action to mitigate the social cost of adjustment <coughs> was not an IMF policy. If you care to know, ask Kosibotu. He's still alive. It was Kosibotu who negotiated that aspect. Because of the IMF policy, because of the impact it will have on the individuals, mm -hmm. the Ghanaians, he then negotiated for what is called PAMS card, program of action to mitigate so the social cost of adjustment. So that's I what we are saying. Okay. I am correcting you. Right. I am correcting you. 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 I am correc